Okay guys, so the market just took another dump today. The Dow and the S&P, eh, they were okay. But the Nasdaq down 2%, the Russell 2000 down 2.35%. A lot of us are feeling the pain in our portfolios if we hold high growth or tech related stocks. Now one of these stocks which is highly talked about on YouTube is the beloved Palantir. Now I've made plenty of videos in the past about Palantir about valuation just didn't make sense to me. But today, hmm, let's see, we'll do some analysis. We'll actually update my model that I have in real time here on this video. And we'll look at where Palantir sits at today. Is it more compelling? Is it something that I'll be willing to put some money into now that we've come down, you know, what is it, 50% plus from its highs? Maybe, maybe. We'll take a look and we'll try to justify, you know, some of the reasoning. And what I do also want to point out here, while we have the charts open here on TradingView, is that we have come down below this major key support level. The last time we came below this, we got bought up pretty quick. We bounced off this once before. Now we're sitting below it today. And this is officially starting to look like a bearish chart now, at least for the short term. The good news though, is that the volume is still relatively low. So it's not too, too concerning. However, if this tech sell off, you know, high growth fear, all this stuff continues, Palantir gets caught up right in the middle of that. And we could end up back in the high to mid teens, which is not all that unrealistic in my opinion. Now today, Palantir is actually down around 6%, 5.93%, 21.88, definitely a lot more compelling than before. And the market cap now has fallen just under $40 billion. So let's just jump over to my model right away. Let's not waste any time here, guys. And I want to show you just a couple of things. Okay, so this is what I had laid out for Palantir. Uh, this is probably a few weeks ago when the market cap was around $49 billion or so. I, I inputted that number here. And this is kind of what I came out with. Now, I know some of this may be a little bit confusing, but I'll just walk through it real quick for you. This is pretty much my revenue projection. So I've used 2020 as what they actually earned. And then I have kind of a 30% growth rate for them from 2021 all the way to 2025. And then I have that drop down by 5% to 25% for the next few years up to 2031. So this is kind of the model I have here. This is what I think Palantir is going to reasonably be able to achieve because I used this screenshot taken directly from their slide deck, directly from Palantir themselves, saying that their five-year outlook is to achieve revenue of $4 billion or more in 2025. So if we look at my model here, this puts them just over a $4 billion mark. So they'll achieve that target with around a 30% growth rate year over year from now to 2025. Okay, so that's the first thing we gotta keep an eye on, make sure that they're continuing on with these numbers. By the end of 2021, 1.4 billion, 1.85 billion, 2.4, 3.1, and then finally surpassing $4 billion. And that's pretty much what I have laid out here at this chart. It's just kind of a visual just to see how quickly this revenue is expected to grow. And, you know, based on this in 2031, we should surpass $15 billion in revenue. Now, of course, the amount of profits that they make will all depend on their margins. It's going to change quite a bit in the next few years as they focus more on advertising, as they focus more on marketing, as they focus more on different aspects of growing their business. So I wouldn't expect margins to be all that great for now. But you know what? This is a high growth company. This is a tech company. I don't care so much right now about profits. I care more about things like price to sales ratio. And that's what I've calculated here. This is a visual of their price to sales using the old $49 billion market cap and using what the revenue estimates I have laid out here to be. And you guys know, I typically will pay around a 10 or lower for a high growth name. You know, the lower, the better, but I'll typically go up to around a 10, maybe a little above that. Palantir is a super high growth company, so I'll go a little above a 10. But if we're looking at, you know, where things stood just a few weeks ago at $49 billion market cap, I was paying you know, 2021, 2022, say a year, two years out, I was paying a price to sales of around 26 to 34. So on average around a 30 price to sales for this business. And I don't care if this is going to change the world. This is going to like be the next big, you know, trillion dollar business, all that stuff. I, I don't really care about the story part. I look at the fundamentals. I look at the numbers and the numbers here were just way too out of whack for me. I did not touch the stock with this sort of valuation. Now, 
If I wanted to achieve my around 10 price of sales, that would put me peeing for Palantir around five to six years out, 2025, 2026 is when I'd get the, you know, around 10 price of sales, which is what I typically aim for. And that's just too far in advance to pay for a business. Who knows what's gonna happen in the next few years. And I didn't wanna take that amount of risk in my portfolio. So now let's update this model based on where we're at today. So Palantir sits at 39, Point eight seven one billion dollars. So let's put that in here. Thirty nine eight seven one billion dollars, and we'll see our price of sales change pretty significantly in the left column here. Boom. Okay, so now we're looking a bit better. We've pulled back that estimate of ten price of sales from around twenty twenty five to twenty twenty six to now bring it down to twenty twenty four twenty twenty five. So we've pulled it back about a year or so and things are starting to look a bit more compelling that being said i'm still looking at this and i'm saying it's still looking pretty expensive to me assuming they still achieve their revenue targets of four billion dollars i'm paying if i buy it today around a price of sales end of 2021 of 27.88 which is just too expensive for me right now but nick we're paying for future right so okay let's look at the next year 2022 it's still a price of sales of 21, which is again, a bit too high for my liking. There are many other businesses out there that have, you know, strong growth, strong futures, strong fundamentals that trade at much more attractive valuations. So it's hard for me to say, oh, Palantir is the best place to put my money into right now based on the numbers that I see. So now you may be wondering, okay, at what price would I really be willing to buy in? We're at, what was it? you know, just around $21, $22 today. I'm still not interested. What price would I be willing to buy in? So let's say the market cap for Palantir falls to around $30 billion. Let's say 30 billion. So if I update this model here with 30 billion, I'll be paying around a 10, you know, price of sales based on 2023 to 2024 numbers, which is about two to three years out, which is much much better and this i would definitely be more willing to take on a bit of risk for but the issue here is that i don't know if we're actually going to hit that 30 billion dollar market cap so for us to get to a price where i'm reasonably happy with this investment to make a bet on palantir it's gonna have to drop quite significantly from where it's at today do i think that's gonna happen i don't know the charts here show me that we are looking pretty bearish on this we bounced off support we rejected previous support here we got resistance at the 50 moving average and now we've come down and broken past the 100 day moving average unfortunately for the weekly the stock is still fairly new so there isn't too much to see here for this however if i'm just looking at technicals looking at support there was some clear support around here maybe slightly below that right around here we did break through it once but we came back up now we're broken through it again. We'll have to see if this is going to create a double bottom and move back higher or if it's going to continue moving lower. The other level of support that I see, like I mentioned at the beginning, is here and possibly here. So this would kind of be the range where I'd probably be very, very interested in buying Palantir. Will we get down there? I don't know. It's going to be roughly around a 13% correction, 14% or so, or like a 25% correction from where we're at today. That's kind, of, that's kind of a steep amount to ask for. I don't really know if we're gonna get down there, but if the market continues selling off like the way it has, if the fear continues like the way it has over the past few weeks, yeah, you can bet that names like Palantir with a $40 billion market cap, not too many fundamentals today to back it up, will see some selling pressure on it. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I kind of did a little bit of a different style here, kind of walked you through some of my analysis as well. Let's just put this back to uh, 39 billion. So we know this for future reference. It's, it's a bit too far still for me to actually put my money into to justify this. Like I said, there are better investments out there that I'm looking at right now. There's actually a brand new stock that I'm looking at that I may open up position in very soon that I think is way cheaper than Palantir, but still has massive upside potential. And if you guys wanna guess on what stock that is, leave it in the comments down below. I haven't purchased it yet. I'm still doing some research, but I'm getting pretty close. 
Anyways, guys, thank you for your continued support. Don't forget to drop a like down below and hit the subscribe button if you're brand new here. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to invest positively, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.